Welcome to a lesson on line integrals in R3. So hopefully you already watched the video on line integrals in R2. This is just an extension of the same idea into three dimensions. So if we have a continuous function f of x, y, z in a region containing a smooth space curve given by the vector valued function as we see here, where t is on the closed interval from a to b, then we can evaluate this function of three variables along the space curve with respects to s by evaluating this integral here with respects to t. So we first convert the function f of x, y, z into a function of t by replacing x with x of t, y with y of t, and z with z of t from the components of the space curve. And then we replace differential s with the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And as we mentioned in the last video, replacing differential s with the magnitude of r prime of t dt should be somewhat familiar to us, should be somewhat familiar to us because we did do this when we were determining arc length of a space curve earlier in the semester. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to integrate the following line integral from the point zero, zero, zero to the point two, five, four. So we first need to define r of t for this path. So if we let the x component be two t, the y component be five t, and the z component be four t, this would be the path of our line integral as long as t is on the closed interval from zero to one. This also tells us that x prime of t would be equal to two, y prime of t would be equal to five, and z prime of t would be equal to four. Let's go ahead and set this up in terms of t. Limits of integration would be from zero to one. Now we're gonna go ahead and rewrite the given function in terms of t. So we'll have two times x times y, so we'll have two times two t times five t. plus three times z, which would be three times four t. We multiply this by the magnitude of r prime of t. So we're gonna have the square root of two squared plus five squared plus four squared dt. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we're gonna have two times two t times five t, that's gonna be twenty t squared this will be 12t. This will be the square root of four plus 25 plus 16. That's gonna be the square root of 45. Let's go to the next page. Here we have a common factor of four. Let's factor out four square root 45. We'll be left with five t squared plus three t. The square root of 45 simplifies to three square root five. So we have 12 square root five. Now we'll go ahead and integrate. We'll have five times t to the third over three or five thirds t cubed plus three times t squared over two or three halves t squared. So when t is one, we'll have five thirds plus three halves when t is zero, these are both zero. Common denominator here would be six. So we have 12 square root of five over one times, this would be 19 over six. And this simplifies here. Now we can multiply, we have two times 19, that's 38 square root of five all over one. So the result would be 38 square root five. Let's take a look at another example. Here we want to integrate the following line integral along r of t equals cosine t sine t t, which is a helix on the closed interval from zero to pi. So notice in this problem, they've already given us the vector valued function for the path of integration. So here's x of t y of t and z of t. So we know that 
x prime of t would be equal to negative sine t. y prime of t is equal to cosine t. And z prime of t would be equal to one. So let's go ahead and convert our function to a function of t and then replace differential s with the magnitude of r prime of t dt. You know the interval for t is from zero to pi. We have two y times sine z. That's gonna be two times sine t. And sine z is equal to sine t because z is equal to t. And we're gonna have the magnitude of r prime of t, so we'll have sine squared t plus cosine squared t plus one squared, or just one. So let's take a look at this square root here. Well, all of this is equal to one, so this becomes the square root of two. Let's go ahead and factor out the square root of two. We'll write this as two sine squared t dt. And let's go ahead and finish this on the next page. Now here we'll have to apply the power reducing formula for sine squared t. Here's the formula here. Notice the twos here simplify out. So we just have one minus cosine two t dt. Then of course here we have a u substitution. So when converting to u, we'd have an extra factor of one half. So we'll have t minus, this will be one half sine two t. Now we'll go ahead and replace t with pi and then zero. Well, when t is pi, we'll have pi minus, the sine of two pi is zero minus, and then when t is zero, these are both zero again. So we're left with square root of two times pi. So the result would just be the square root of two pi. And that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found these examples helpful.